this is something I've I've written here, and this is more of like a uh, slightly more ethereal question or theoretical question on booking. Is there there are like only seven reasons to have a feud between two wrestlers, and I can only think of about four. There's like fighting over a belt, uh, uh, fighting over a woman, fighting for money, fighting for competition. Uh, because one is bad and the other one's good, and you know the the righteous shall rule over uh, evil. But I mean, how do you how do you take those the five that I mentioned and maybe a couple of other reasons people fight and spin it out into years and years and years of content? I think we have this. Here, here's what amazes me. Wrestling is so much more covered now that it's been exposed. Everybody still wants to know how it's done. But the longevity is, it's a personal issue. If you get two guys that come across that this may be a little legit. It's like AEW some of these promos now, the guys that are shooting against each other, supposedly, uh, that's all I read about and hear about, right? Mm -hmm. It's like when I did the angle of pillar, everybody thought it was real. They tuned in. I mean, when I was a kid, I was an amateur wrestler. I knew wrestling was bullshit, but the first time I saw the Sheik, I thought he was real. I thought, oh, everything else is bullshit, but he's real. How is that humanly possible? Everybody else is working except him. Uh, so I think it's that you have a connection with somebody and it just works. And it's like Flair and Steamboat. That just work. It was two sides of the same coin. Good, evil, blonde, dark hair. I mean, family man, carouser. It was just perfect. Funk, and then funk is the same way, but the wild man. Uh, if you don't have the guy feeling it, I don't care what you do. I don't think it works. And there's... um. Oh, what was I going to say then? Yeah, well, is it the Johnny Valentine uh, line of, I can't make people believe wrestling is real, but I can make them believe I'm real? How do you make someone yeah. believe that you're real without beating them up? Well, I think it's energy. It's like I said to you when I was a kid and I saw the Sheik. It was like, I actually thought the build had moved. And you know, the I don't know if you read that book uh, where Brian Solomon wrote about it's called Ice of Fire, the greatest seal of all times. Mm -hmm. I was there that night when he talked about, when the she I talked him into using the Sheik in Detroit. I bet them 500 bucks, they'll see 500 bucks would draw a $100,000 house. It was the biggest house they had at the bash. Only time in my life I was involved in a double switch it was me and Murdoch against the Sheik and Dusty in a cage, and it ended up being me and the Sheik against Murdoch and Dusty. But when the Sheik came into the building, he came in when the first match was halfway over, pulled his limo in, got out, draped in gold, three-piece suit, no shirt, you know. Cornette and Bobby Fulton come around the corner. They're looking at him like he's, they're two little kids and they're giggling. He has, a, he has a guy open the trunk, take his bags. He still had that magic, you know. He carried himself as a star. I think it's uh, without beating them up, you have to lay it in. You know what I mean? It doesn't have to hurt. cripple someone. But, I mean, the people need to hear stuff. You know what I mean? They need to hear. The, like Rick. I think that Rick's gotten all away with that chop because he's laid it in for so many years. I don't think people be worn <laughs> when the way they do now or a few years ago. If he wasn't laying it in, 